Welcome into Lemons to Lemonade. Our channel has grown over a thousand new subscribers since I posted our video last week. So if you're new here, welcome. My name is Kara and my husband and I are a furniture flipping family located deep in the heart of Texas. We started flipping furniture last year when my husband lost his job due to COVID as a way to keep food on the table. And we have been flipping furniture ever since. We bring you exciting furniture flips for profit premiering every weekend. So if you enjoy that type of content, do us a big favor and hit that subscribe button so you never miss a flip. This week, we are going back to basics and flipping a dresser that we've actually flipped three times before in this past year. Every time I see this style appear on Facebook Marketplace, I scoop it up because it's a really hot seller for us. A lot of people have similar items like this in their home. So let me show you how you can turn something that you may already own into a fun, fresh, fabulous new piece of farmhouse furniture that you can enjoy for years to come. So come along to the garage and we'll show you how it's done. Here's the original ad from Facebook Marketplace. It was a buffet hutch, so we took off the bottom part of it, and that is the part that we're going to flip. The bottom part of the buffet was in perfect condition. It didn't really need a whole lot, just some refreshing and some updating to bring it up to speed and desirable to put into someone's home. First things first, everything always gets a good clean. We like to use crud cutter mixed up to the package directions, spray it all over the piece, and it just is a really good way to degrease and degrime all of your pieces and get all the dirt off so that you have a nice smooth finish to paint on. We like to use a large scrub brush like this when we have these kind of details on dressers. It really just gets into all those nooks and crannies to make sure that all the dust and dirt is out. To take this top down to bare wood so we'll start with a 120 grit sandpaper on our makita rotary sander and go ahead and get this finish off the top
once you're down to the bare wood it's good to go over it again with the 240 grit it just helps to take out any swirl marks that you may have missed and smooth out the piece overall before you apply stain or whatever you're going to add to the top and it gives it more of a smooth to the touch finish It's almost time to paint and so we are going to go ahead and cover the top so we don't get any overspray on it. I was really grateful for Chris this week because we are in full homeschool mode and mom is just not quite used to the schedule yet so husband really stepped it up and got this piece done over the weekend so that we could have some things to sell on Facebook Marketplace. We're just using some craft paper that we picked up from Walmart to cover the top of this piece. I will be sure to link it in the comments if you're interested in picking up some of this. It is the perfect size for covering the tops of dressers, so we tend to buy quite a few rolls of this when we make a stop there. Now the dresser needs a nice scuff sand before we paint. Scuff sanding your pieces is really important before you chalk paint because it helps the chalk paint adhere to your piece. We are using our surf prep sander with a squishy foam pad attached and a medium grit sanding pad. Uh, the squishy foam really helps to get into these little nooks and crannies and details as you can see Chris doing. Just really helps that paint stick overall. And then when you're done, you could take your leaf blower to it, but you can also wipe it off with the rag. <laughs> chosen to use the color alabaster from Sherwin Williams in their chalk paint formula. It's not a white white but more of a pearl white and we sell a lot of pieces that are done in alabaster. We've got it loaded up into our gravity fed HVLP sprayer and off we go. We've chosen the color Espresso by Minwax in their wood stain. I like the color Espresso. It's just a little bit darker than the dark walnut and it really helps to bring out some of those striations in the wood and have a nice little contrast between the lighter wood and the darker wood. So 
So it's the middle of summer and it's really hot here in Texas, as you could guess. So it is taking a long time for the top on this to dry. I normally use a water-based poly to go over our furniture with, and that includes the tops, but that means that my oil-based stain needs to be completely dry at least two or three days before I can go over with a water-based poly or else you're gonna have some problems. So this one took a very, very long time to dry, and by long time, I mean probably five days. So to be safe, I chose to use the Wipe On Watco Poly instead because it's oil-based just like the Minwax stain and this ensures that I'm not going to have any issues between a water base and an oil base if I just do oil base on oil base I should be just fine and get a still beautiful wood finish that's going to be very durable for my client who's going to purchase this piece the trick to this wipe on poly is to not overwork it you can see it when it goes on. It is very shiny on the top, so you can see where you've been. So you'll put on typically about three coats on a top coat. Uh, just let it dry really well in between, and then it dries to a nice hard diamond finish. When we do dressers like this, I always prefer a little bit of a distressed finish. It just makes these details stand out a little more and they're so pretty and fancy on the front of this that they need just a little bit of help when it's all painted the same color. So going over it with a fine distressing about a 300 grit sandpaper just to help bring out these flowers and bits and pieces really just helps set the piece off in my opinion. Before we poly the dresser, I need to make sure that all the sanding dust is off from de-stressing the details. We decided to keep the original knobs to the piece. They were so cute and fit the piece so perfectly, so why try to replace them? I am gonna go ahead and hand paint these. They've got a good scrub. I'm gonna use the same alabaster chalk paint. And oh yes, those are the pink Provincial dresser set in the back that you saw me flip on a previous video. Oh, those pieces gave me such a headache. If you wanna see what we did to get those hot pink pieces, I'll link the video at the top. I'm going to give the handles a light distressing in the same way that I did the front of the dresser. It 
it's finally time to top coat these, we're going to use our Minwax Helmsman Spar Urethane loaded up into our Gravity Fed HVLP sprayer. And dressers usually get two coats throughout with the Spar Urethane. All right guys, I know you're anxious for the big reveal, but before we get there, let's talk numbers. I picked up this buffet for a total of 120 bucks. Those of you who have been with us for a little bit, you know I have a hard time spending more than $80 on a dresser. But because we know how well this one sells, I decided to go ahead and grab it. We already owned the paint, but if we didn't, it cost me $24 for a quart of the Sherwin-Williams Chalky Finish Formula. That puts me in at a total of 144 bucks overall. I'm going to list the piece this coming weekend on Facebook Marketplace for $640. The profits from this flip are going to charity to help pay some medical bills for a dear friend of ours. The last three flips like this sold really quickly, and I hope this one will do the same. Thanks for joining us. Be sure to tune in next week as I've got a really fun vintage flip to share with you. We're going to see if we can bring this guy up to speed and make it a lot more desirable to put into somebody's house. We hope to see you next week on Lemons to Lemonade.